Welcome back to the show. Now, don't be confused that these guys are on the table. They're not kittens, I don't think, right, Par or, right Ski? <laughs> no, they are not. And we are just enthralled over here playing with them. They have such personalities here. Merlin over here is the darker one, and Picasso is the more white one over here. And they were brought in by a, another organization that just didn't have the resources to take care of them. They were very underage, underweight, and covered in ticks. So they were brought into our uh, facility, and they were checked out by vets. And then once they were cleaned of ticks, they went into foster with Jennifer, who put some weight on them. And they are quite the little chunks. They are heavy. They are definitely carrying that extra weight for the winter. Um, Puppies, you know, they are a good example. They definitely require you to make sure that your house is set up and puppy proof, that you have the appropriate gates uh, to keep them into designated areas. You have the right chew toys. Maybe get two so they can chew on each other because they really just absolutely love each other. Um, but also it's important that you Take into fact that you're going to need routine vet care at the beginning of bringing a puppy into your house because they're going to need their vaccines, which are usually done in a series of three to four. And with the summer here and the monsoon seasons, definitely want to make sure that the puppies aren't exposed to things like distemper, parvo, and those other diseases that can be absolutely deadly to puppies. Um, so making sure that you're exercising them properly in your home or in the yard and that you really wait until your veterinarian says that they're old enough to go out and explore the world, that they're safe from any communicable diseases that they can get from other dogs or dog droppings. Now, if you want a dog, but you just don't have this time to keep them, maybe you travel a lot for work, that's where fostering comes in great because you can come into town when you're in town. You can take that foster animal, take them for a day, two days, five days, two weeks, bring them back, leave town, go back on and work again. You can get that fix of an older dog, maybe be a puppy or a kitten. There's so many different dogs that need foster, so many animals that need foster, that there is the right foster for every family. And you can get more information on any of that by going to azhumane.org so forward slash foster. <laughs> they want you to go right now. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. And we can't stress enough the importance of safety, especially for sick and injured pets that we rescue at the Arizona Humane Society. Now, we don't know what this girl's outcome would have been if she hadn't been rescued in time, Perry. Right, Kelsey, and she was uh, brought to us from another emergency animal clinic, common story we have here at the Arizona Humane Society, and then uh, transported to our Second Chance Animal Trauma Hospital by none other than our own Lisa. So not only does she appear on Pets on Parade and volunteer in the hospital, she drives a van sometimes that picks up animals from these emergency animal clinics and brings them back to our hospital, which allows our EMTs to go out and actually rescue animals, not just be drivers. So couldn't do it without the volunteers again. This little one right here, when she came in, badly fractured uh, leg. And uh, in the case of where I had uh, the doggy up here before with uh, femoral hydastectomy, this one, we couldn't save the leg on this one. You know, and it's sometimes with animals, uh, it's not easy to tell them to cage rest and to sit down and to be calm and all that. So sometimes it's in their best interest with badly fractured legs that it's not going to be feasible to do rest day. So sometimes the amputation is the best uh, uh, alternative. And that was the case here with this little one. And uh, Patty Cake here is great kitten, a big purr machine. I can just feel the rumble on her body right now, and she doesn't miss that leg at all. She is just willing to jump around and climb. She is a real sweetie. If you want a wonderful kitten who's going to be a great family member, come on down and look at the great little patty cake here. Awesome. Thank you, Perry. And happy adoption day, Tater Tot. This four-year-old Pity was adopted and returned in March for being too friendly. Now we are thrilled to show her wearing the biggest smile ever with her new mom, who loves how friendly she is. Tater Tot was one of the 217 pets rescued earlier this year from a local boarding facility that kept pets in horrible conditions. She was the last animal to find her forever home from that awful place, and we are so happy to see her thrive in the arms of her new mama. All adoptions warm our hearts, especially the long-timers and especially this one. So only one of our guests is available for adoption today, but they do have one thing in common, and that's the fact that you fostered them. Janine, please tell us about Jasper and Chuck Bass. Oh my gosh, I have such a sweet spot in my heart for these two. I had Chuck here for nine and a half weeks. He had uh, an upper respiratory infection that became a herpes virus, and he had corneal ulcers and had to have both his eyes removed. And then I fostered this little guy, this is Jasper, and he had genetic anomalies. One eye was really tiny, the other eye was um, foggy and blue, so our second chance animal trauma hospital vets um, decided to go ahead and take him out just so they wouldn't be a source of infection. 
but oh my gosh, these two are just lovely, sweet, beautiful, fun, fun, fun creatures. We love them. And this is Nicole, and she's actually the foster or the adoptive mom, and she's a vet tech. And I went in there to my vet one day, and I was telling her the story of him, and she goes, "I want a special needs kitten." And I'm like, and she goes, "And I hope it's white." And I said. Here you go. <laughs> and so how's it been having him in your house? Oh man, it has been amazing. He is the sweetest, most friendly cat ever. He is fearless. You would think with no eyes that he would just, you know, be scared of everything, um, but he is fearless and he is just as playful as any other kitten and um, just the biggest cuddle bug. I love him. You want a velvety fur kitty. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. And he is so soft. <laughs> and we never have to leave the lights on for them. So it was so funny. Yeah. We had the monsoon, and I had two blackouts. And next thing you know, Jasper was leading us around the house because he's like, you amateurs, I got this. But he, there's, I think they're about 1% impaired. So somebody has to come down because we're calling them special needs, but they're actually, you need a special cat. They're awesome. They are. Thank you, and we just love them so much. Thank you so much for for Chuck, and hopefully you guys will get a home for um, Jasper as well. And friendly reminder for all of our pet lovers and AHS supporters out there, help the Arizona Humane Society help homeless pets by simply shopping at AJ's Fine Foods. Visit any one of their locations in Arizona and mention that you like to donate to us. Any amount is accepted. And for example... Consider the fact that a $50 donation will help feed 50 animals for a whole day that are currently in our care. So hop on over and get some groceries and save a life today. And I have to admit that I really debated on if I wanted to do an impression of who this next uh, dog is named after. But everyone is shaking their heads, so I think that's a no. <laughs> this is Scooby. <laughs> but he isn't brave like the Scooby you see on TV. Scooby here is a little bit nervous. He is an adorable little chihuahua rat terrier three years old he was an owner surrender to us and sometimes these little ones have a hard time at the shelter so luckily our foster hero Rhonda stepped up to take him home help him heal from his cold and then she also taught him how to be brave and tell him everything's gonna be all right our foster heroes are great for things like that so little uh, Scooby here has been helped out by our behavior team to learn how to be brave in his kennel so give him an extra minute when you come in this is Scooby Gosh, and whether you're a fan of fast food or not you'll definitely want to meet keep your TVs tuned right here to meet little McMuffin